Hey everybody, welcome back to Doing the Land Plays of Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus, where we've been just doing well on these Eden runs. We haven't really had a tricky one yet uh, over the course of this streak. This one might be it. Decent speed and black powder. Really bad starting space of our item in the form of uh, Isaac's Cup of Tears. Damage is good-ish, but tears are pretty bad. HP's alright though. XZMSH7AA. Um, have seven anti-aliases, everybody. Um, what's an anti-alias? I don't know. I mean, I, I do do a little bit of programming, but I don't know much about graphics. I have to assume that an anti-alias is just your real name. Get it? It's it's the most basic level wordplay. I'm not very proud of it. Either way, um, Mr. Mega in our first item room is actually... You might think that I'm mildly disappointed by this, but I'm not. I'm actually fairly pleased. Stud Finder is... Uh, well, honestly, I don't know how Stud Finder is. But I will say that uh, Mr. Mega gives us five get-out-of-jail-free cards until we can improve our DPS, which hopefully happens relatively soon. At least we got some bombs there. Obviously, I did want to blow up this, but uh, single spirit heart is a little bit on the cheap side. Blank rune. Probably a secret room. What are we looking for? I mean, honestly, we need a tears upgrade. The most likely place to get a tears upgrade is quite obviously, I mean, the luck's great and the money's good here, but most obvious place to get a tears upgrade is, of course, the, the boss fight at this point because we've already seen our item room. I would suggest, though, that we probably have, like, a 5% chance of leaving this floor being super happy with our damage. So instead, let's get ourselves set and ready for the, the possibility that we might be in this until the first deal with the devil when it comes to actually uh, making this run pop off. But luckily, they've given us the HP necessary to make this happen, and uh, we'll give ourselves a chance at an arcade. We already have enough spirit hearts to not necessarily feel like we need to buy one, which is a luxury in and of itself. I think one bomb? That's all right. With 1.06 speed, uh, I was going to say we actually could use black powder, but not here. We got algae, Dude. Oh, we got algae and another blank rune. So, we might not want to take this other blank rune right now, because if it's algae, we don't get much value out of it, but... I was kind of... I, I don't know what I was hoping for. I guess I was hoping it would be Burkano or something, which is really, like, the only rune that provides us any value in this room, but... I didn't really look at my, like, firing table for blank rune and like, oh, it fits these criteria, so... I was playing it by feel there, and in the end it did, uh... Did relatively work out, at least. I was kind of hoping that Famine would be one of those enemies who, like, flies, but still somehow takes damage from Black Powder. Doesn't appear to be the case. Obviously, no tears upgrade here. I am going to use Blank Rune after the fight, just in case it's... You know... Perthro, even though I want the Cube of Meat. It's not Perthro, it's another Algis. That's fine. You know, you might say, why well, didn't use it on the next floor? If it was Algis, you could have used it to have invincibility. Yeah, but, you know, the butterfly effect and all that. If we went down to this floor and used it, it might not have been algae. I really find that the butterfly effect is the best uh, excuse to pop out if you are ignorant of statistical concepts as I am. Dude, you never... It's, dude, the butterfly effect. If a single butterfly in Hanoi, Vietnam flapped its wings, we could have had a good chicken sandwich here instead of a bad chicken sandwich. It's just the butterfly effect. Sir, please. How did you find me? I left a bad Yelp review and all of a sudden you've shown up on my doorstep. It's very confusing. Look, I'm just saying. It's variance, okay? It's not fair for you to give me a one-star review because of variance. I've never left a one-star review on Yelp. Dude, okay. I, I don't know how often this... It seems to come up very often. I don't really have a bone to pick with South Park. What I have a bone to pick is occasionally with the viewers of South Park who watch the, the message of South Park every single time the show was on the air is always that people on both sides of every issue are idiots. Usually, at least, that's the message, you know? They make fun of something, and then they come back and make fun of the people who are making fun of the something, and then, you know, they, they end up usually in a very moderate position of, hey, everybody, you're being stupid, be sane. Um, we're going to take black candle here. 
So whenever I mention Yelp, people go, oh, Yelp, like that South Park episode. Look, I get you're trying to find common ground as a human being with me here, and I respect that. At the same time, don't ever talk to me or my son ever again. Yelp is extorting businesses, but also very useful when it comes to picking a restaurant. If you, if you don't believe that, I don't know where we're going to start with one another here. I understand they have some questionable business practices, but I think for the most part, it's at least a guide for users to use. You know what you used to do? You want to go to a restaurant? You walk down the street. We are going to take a tack fly here. You walk down the street, you see a sign. Oh, that sign looks like the place inside cares about its food. Or you go look at the menu. Looking at the menu is like the most... I, I, I still do it from time to time. But, you know, oh, ooh, Cajun chicken sandwich. That sounds good. No, it doesn't. It sounds like a chicken sandwich. It could be good. It could be terrible. That's the whole, that's the reason there are reviews of things, man. And everything sounds good. No restaurant writes a menu and goes, oh, you know, it's the fish and chips. Only order this if you're allergic to everything else on the menu because it tastes like shit. You know, you got this. There has to, there's probably a better way to deal with it. I'll admit, okay? But somebody's gotta be making some restaurant reviews here on a crowdsourced level because otherwise it's just ridiculous. Okay, we don't necessarily want that yet. Was that too preachy? It might have been too pre I didn't mean it to be preachy. The only issues I get preachy about is restaurant reviews, man. Lump of coal actually means that we could get deals with the angel in this run because we don't have a devil precedent. Super bandage is good. Um... I'm just looking at uh, Ryan's Skype corner today. Everyone's talking about... I mean, th this actually makes it seem like my backlog is larger than it is. But it came out like a week and a half ago. Everyone's talking about Mass Effect Andromeda. Bear says, did anybody play Mass Effect Andromeda? I don't think I will. And then Rob said, you know, I might play it just to see what all the fuss is about. I'm going to get on a soapbox. Apparently, I'm like in soapbox mode today. I understand that... Um, you know, Mass Effect Andromeda and Bioware to a greater extent as well. By the way, we are going to... Ooh, I mean, first off, we were going to give this guy Spirit Arts anyway, but I understand that there's a lot of politics associated with that studio. It makes them contentious in a modern day and age. I'm just talking about this from a game perspective. I've I've been in this business for a while. Uh, not, not as long as a lot of people, admittedly, but enough to... I, I ain't learned the law, but I know a little bit. Enough to know you want to illegally search my shit. These are rules that I choose to live by. And I just, this cycle happens with a lot of games. You know, it, we have a short memory, I think, in this industry sometimes. But Mass Effect Andromeda, hotly anticipated. Um, bad in ways, I haven't played it myself, admittedly. But at least the, it's super cut and edited uh, into these, like, video compilations that make it look really bad. Admittedly. Janky animations, some writing issues that certain, like, to be honest with you, like, you, you look at some of the clips and you're like that is just actually bad writing i accept that but um i don't know i i've found myself i guess and I, I i've taken issue with this phrase many times as well i'm not coming to bad for mass effect andromeda a game that i just said looks bad uh and i have not played myself so this would be it'd be irresponsible to either admonish it or champion it what i will say is that you know the more time i've spent in this uh industry the less i care about joining the chorus of like this game's bad let's pile on on some level there's consumer advocacy there you know you're like this game you know they're selling it for 60 bucks and it's bad i get that but at some point i do feel at least for me you cross a line from consumer ad consumer advocacy to like punching down it i mean it's, it's basically click clickbait is what i'm trying to say i'm not trying to call any other content creators out necessarily, which is why I'm using my uh, extremely demure voice. Um, but you know, I just wonder, there's been a, probably it's the most written about game of this week, this month maybe, although, you know, it depends on, I guess Zelda is slightly less than a month ago. Um, I just wonder how much ink, how many YouTube videos, you know, have been spilled. I'm gonna, ah, I think we should just go. Uh, talking about Mass Effect Andromeda that could have gone to promoting some other games that were cool that came out this month but didn't get the attention they deserve. 
Like Loot Rascals, for example. That was a game I was amazed had so little press despite being really cool and, and being very sellable, I thought. Like, the, the visuals in that game are, are really, really kind of adventure timey, which makes sense. But, you know, oh, you're like, what's Loot Rascals? Exactly. What's Loot Rascals? Nobody knows. Well, some people know, especially if you're watching this. But, um, but everybody knows, you know, they can quote like six lines from Mass Effect Andromeda. That are, that are particularly cringeworthy. Now, I, I do want to preface this as well. Not preface, the post this as well by saying, you know, the heart wants what it wants. I can't deny, I've watched some of those Mass Effect supercuts. That's the reason people make them. They're getting clicks, they're getting watches, and it's not valueless content, you know. They, they have informed consumers of, you know, issues that they might face. But I do think that sometimes in the industry we get a little bit self-righteous and we go, you know, Sure, I've, I've taken some things in this game out of context and punched down, but it's because it's a product that they're charging money for. And then, on some level, that is fair. I would not want to be misconstrued as being anti-consumer. But I'm also like, man, you know what would be really good for the consumer is instead of 15,000 videos a day cumulatively and myriad articles about this game being bad, there were like 14,000 about it being bad, and then like a thousand about these other games that are actually good and largely fairly cheap as well. But, you know, I'm not particularly innocent in there as well. I mean, like, you wanna, I, I again, I'm gonna South Park it. I'm all, I always pull it back on myself as well. How many, um, how many videos could I do of games that are particularly interesting that I don't do because I'm playing Isaac instead? In my defense, though, Isaac is dope, and you're watching this video right now. So, fuck both of us. We're all sons of bitches. Anyway, that's my piece about Mass Effect Andromeda. I'm not suggesting it's necessarily good, and it is remarkable. Um, at least in those, like, super cuts of the game looking... I'm, please give me a bomb. In those super cuts of the game looking particular... Don't speak of this ever again. In those super cuts of, those, of the game looking particularly bad, it is remarkable that... Some of this stuff exists in a triple-A game. I don't disagree with you on that one, but... Y'all are missing... You're sleeping on Loot Rascals, man. You're sleeping. But there's also, there's always been, like, an element of that in the games industry. Uh, you know, half of it is, like... I found this cool game. We should all play it together. And then, like, another small portion of it is... Hey guys, did you see the Mass Effect Andromeda supercut? That game looks a little whack. By the way, if you love Mass Effect Andromeda, I'm not shitting on you either. I oftentimes, dude, I've got, you know how much I've gone to bat for For Honor this year? At the risk of like alienating everybody watching this video, I think For Honor may still be my game of the year. What about Hollow Knight? Yeah, I know, right? Hollow Knight is like a piece of art, but I still find my, it's like the difference between like a, oh, a deliciously cooked beef wellington and like a Big Mac, you know? Hollow Knight is a piece of art. It's elegant. It's incredibly well designed. For Honor is a game that, especially like in its launch week, the servers worked only about 45% of the time. And yet I find myself being like most fun experiences I've had this year. For Honor, dude. So, rest assured, I'm not necessarily a paragon of, of amazing taste. And like I said, the heart wants what the heart wants. I don't, I don't admonish uh, pseudo clickbait. I don't make it myself, but that's, mostly at least, but that's more because, I mean, we're doing fine. And I, I respect that you guys have rewarded the fact that we don't make needlessly hyperbolized titles and, and thumbnails and stuff like that. But then on the other hand, also, I hate dealing with the comments. So you ever freaking call the episode Data Miner because I use Data Miner in it. And then people go, you didn't use Data Miner enough. But you called the episode data miner. That's clickbait. Okay, look. You're preaching to the converted. That is not clickbait, and in my opinion, you are wrong, but I understand. Now, I hope we can all be okay with this now that we're, you know, a couple of months away from that data miner episode. Still a little salty, but, you know, I'm, I'm over it. I'm over it. Let's get back to the positives. We will take PhD. By the way, this run is still sort of not good. Does Blood Rites... It takes red hearts. Okay, so I will stick with that for now. Um, it, it's got room to grow, uh, but it's certainly still a little bit on the poor side. Anyway, that's that's my piece on Mass Effect Andromeda. 
It is important to let consumers know, I suppose, when it when a game is not good, but when it just becomes like a a pile on, I'm sort of like you guys are smart. You should be talking about what well, maybe would foster a better environment in the industry if instead of piling on and being like, man, you know this reanimator. That's the not only the name of a great 1986 movie, but also the game plan for the Mass Effect Andromeda DLC. Wackity schmackity do. Okay, like it's funny, but at the same time, like loot rascals, yo. But I watch the videos too, so I am a hypocrite, as always. See, we South Parked it. Anyway, am I gonna play Mass Effect Andromeda? I kind of want to, but I'm gonna wait for it to. I mean, I got I, it's a perfect subscriber Sunday stream game. So basically, that I leave it up to the will of the people once The Witcher Three is done, which should happen, you know, sometime this millennium. And uh, great game as well, by the way. Witcher Three. The Witcher Three is innocent, but we'll see. Um, wait, wait till it dies down, because last thing I want to do is play Mass Effect Andromeda on the subscriber stream and have to deal with, you know, chat every two seconds being like, this is, you know, why are you playing this game? Why are you closed? The Toronto people want to shop! Anyway. And maybe they'll fix it. Probably not. Maybe it's not that broken to begin with. I don't know. Talk to somebody who's played it. That's better off, man. That's better off. Um, Get out of here. How are we going to pull this run together? I can't believe that we have gotten like no dam- We have actually gotten zero damage upgrades. Mind you, we've almost doubled our rate of fire. And that's dope. But- you know, a run without damage upgrades. It's unlikely to make it that far in, in today's modern Isaac economy, is my opinion. I will say that um, the red... Uh, I was going to call it red onion. <laughs> I think I'm too tired. Uh, Blood Rites is a lovely choice right now. Every time we get a red heart, we... Uh, are able to use Blood Rites basically as a Necronomicon. Now, it takes a special kind of shitty run to make me love Blood Rites. It also takes the right amount of HP, which we're lucky to have. But, um, yeah, I mean, Blood Rites is, is good for us right now. If we could get, um, maybe, like, a Bloody Penny or something like that be even better just being able to use it every now and then we we gotta be like i was gonna say do for an angel or devil room coming up halo of flies is fine this will work us closer to beelzebub which is actually um probably not a win condition but close to oh we actually are beelzebub now so we can fly which is important um that is a roundabout way of saying we can fly now let me talk to you about it's a kindly contentious issue flying no i'm just i'm character i'm be making a caricature of myself right now i don't know man like it I hesitate to get out my opinion because sometimes it sounds like it's being preachy and I don't mean for that. I really don't. And in the end, you know, writers, YouTubers, they gotta eat. I'm not gonna put someone on blast for making, uh, you know, a Mass Effect supercut of all these funny moments because it's entertainment. And again, you gotta eat, dude. I understand that. I'm trapped. <laughs> I understand that on, on an intimate level. So maybe my, my whole opinion is that uh, I have no opinion, as often is the case. Hey, uh, this is the worst Sister Viz fight I've had in, like, the entire time this DLC has been out. Including the pre-nerf era. Polydactyly... What makes you larger, not worth anything? Judas' is shadow. I mean, you know, beggars can't be choosers, man. We'll take betrayal because we can for free. And then, well, I head down to the next floor. I'm thinking almost the right play is to, um... Well, I was going to say die on boss rush. But I actually think that now... I didn't mean to give you this. Don't get, don't get too flattered, Three Skull Monty. Thanks for the payout, but I don't care. Um, I think the right thing to do is maybe, yeah, I was gonna say, see if we get HP there. Pop these and see if we get spirit arts, which we don't. And then take damage. Just, just, just roast me, dude. I'm ready, take me out. I may try to kill you just to see if, um, if you drop 
a black heart thanks to the virus, but then I'm out. Are we even shooting right now? Okay, roast me, dude. Ooh! <laughs> it's a really great sound. All right, so our damage is better now. We are potentially able to make boss rush happen, although now that we've uh, used our respawn, we really need a uh, teleport card in order to make this happen. And yeah, like, I mean, it's, as you can see, a bit of a dangerous situation. We also need one more red heart uh, if we're going to make blood rites useful again. This is, without a doubt, over the past seven runs at least, this is the hardest of all the uh, Eden runs on this little pseudo streak. Oh, that was so bad. This little pseudo streak we got going on here. So, I mean, 7.0 damage with a 7 rate of fire. There's work to be done. I was so up my own ass in terms of the commentary on this run that I have no idea whether or not I've missed out on like some obvious opportunities. I mean, I went to every item room or every shop to the best of my memory, so... I'm not sure, considering we don't have a D6, considering we never lost like a deal with the devil chance, I'm not sure what more we could have done. Possibly Tinted Rocks, admittedly, that's oftentimes an avenue for improvement, but... Nice, nice block, nice block. Appreciate that. Boss Rush is probably not going to happen. Uh, I think another Spirit Heart is a great purchase. Yeah, Boss Rush is 100% not going to happen. There is a Spirit Heart back there for us. We really shouldn't be worried about Boss Rush, except for the fact that uh, we need damage. And really, at this point... Any extra item pedestal is a chance for us to make that happen. So, I mean, we know we're getting the Polaroid. We have an item room available for us on this. But apart from that, every uh, every one of our hopes and dreams is kind of pinned on picking up, like, at least an 8 out of 10 item or a few 7 out of 10s at this point. So, we're really... Uh, you know what? We don't need... We know we don't need to do that room. I didn't really want to skip it, but I, I found myself in a, a bit of a... Time of trouble, Mother Mary, comfort me, etc., etc. So we're we're kind of uh, we're pinning our hopes on either surviving until like the next deal with the devil, where our odds are better, beating the odds on this deal with the devil, or getting like a really really good item room, or or another really really good item somewhere else, which is very unlikely. And I gotta like be straight with y'all. Seven damage is not that much. In today's world, you know, back in Vanilla Isaac, seven damage might have been good enough. But, you know, that with the housing market destroyed, seven damage ain't going to carry you as far as it used to in, you know, like 1975. So, we really need to kind of get with the times here. Infamy is a great item. You know, it's going to slow our burn rate. But I'm not really sure about um, long-term prospects here. But, mom fight should be easy enough. Focus on the positive. Infamy is an 8 out of 10 item, if not better. And I asked for it. We also have the virus. And 7 damage might not be great, but it's a hell of a lot better than 3.78 or whatever we had. So, plus Beelzebub. But we don't really have a, a ton of future potential. Like, we're, we have a transformation. We're not awaiting a transformation. I should be using black powder more, especially now that we can fly. Um, even a small black powder circle is like half decent. Good fight. Did not beat the odds. Take the Polaroid. Head down to the next floor. We have no mapping, but we have a 75% chance of a deal with the devil. All right, so what's, what's the big uh, play here? Dude, if we can get a judgment... And enough money to play him until he pays out and then get an HP upgrade. I recognize, by the way, the more I talked there, the more I was like, that's like a 19-step process. Um, Stud Finder, I don't know if it's been worthless or I just haven't been blowing up enough rocks. But I think we would replace it for the left hand at this point, And thankfully, we're going to have that opportunity. So, um, I, am, I am very pro left hand at this point. Probably not on the chest, but you know, play your cards right, you never know what might show up. And again, while we're focusing on the positive here, dude, this is actually like a very fast bad run. 
And don't get it twisted. I don't like fast runs because it allows me to record more runs on a daily basis. Although I will admit, there is a benefit there. I like fast runs because it makes you, you know, you get that feeling of strength. That you're actually, you know, you are bending the game to your wheel as opposed to the opposite. It makes the game feel better to be quickly moving through rooms. It's just more satisfying to walk into a room, you know, shoot a big old laser beam and kill every enemy. Than it is to take 15 shots to kill even a simple basic turret. Not that I'm complaining. I mean, it flies in the face of what I was just talking about. I was just saying this is a good run, but you get the idea. Um, what a dodge, followed by another very needlessly impressive and agile dodge. But still, what is wrong with me? We are going to go to our curse room, and uh, I don't really have a defense for that, except for that desperate times call for desperate measures, and it's only going to cost us one spirit heart because we can fly, so. We broke even. Completely fine. I'm a little frightened about that. Dude, Halo of Flies just saved my ass there. Much appreciated. Thank you so much. Um, okay. Sadly, hit a dead end. I'll just go ahead and say that we are slowing down. So I would say that, uh, I mean, just from a damage perspective, I don't really want to fight Hush on this run to begin with. But certainly, I, I oh, that was lucky. Certainly, I don't want to uh, needlessly rush, cost ourselves HP, and then go down to the blue womb with eight cents. You know, that's... Extremely uh, suboptimal play. And we don't need to play optimally on this run, but we gotta be pretty close to optimal. It's not quite train wreck territory. We, like, again, seven damage is not that bad, but it's also quite certainly not that good. I think we have zero chance to get uh, BFF. Short of going to the hush fight. BFF would really be like, potentially, I'm not going to say as good as Brimstone, but like very, very useful. That was a great power pill. You know what? I am going to use bombs or key. Who would have thought, you know, when I, <laughs> first floor, pick up Mr. Mega. All right, this buys us some time. Then I'm like, yeah, fuck 18 keys. Give me 18 bombs so I can get through this floor a little better. Um... It's a, it's a dang old nightmare here, man. Still using Cuba meat to deal like probably 40% of our damage. Now, is that a long-term positive for us? No, it's a long-term idiot move by an idiot man. Idiot man. Losing HP due to Cuba meat, yeah. You're an idiot, boy. It's a wonder that you still know how to streak. That's Bob Dylan's idiot win from 1970s. 1976's best album, Blood on the Tracks. It's a very powerful closer. Oh, there you go. Please. This is it. 75% deal with the devil chance. Just give me a boost. It doesn't have to win us the game. Tears upgrade's very nice. And you know what? Pentagram is pretty okay. 3.38 damage. A very mild increase in our chances of getting a deal with the devil on the next floor. Three damage is no joke, though. Does Blood Rites do damage proportional to our damage? Because it means that if we were able to pick up, uh... Basically lard. <laughs> Just like, three items that fit the bill. If we were able to pick up more than one HP upgrade, uh... At the same time, we could pretty easily start to... Ball relatively hard here. We are on permanent Polaroid invincibility now, which is... Probably a good thing. I'm also, I'm... If we get hit, we should test whether or not Blood Rites... Um, benefits from permanent Polaroid invincibility. So we should test, you know, that's another small deal with the devil chance. Um, we should test whether or not we're able to, uh, spam blood rights if we get hit once. Gotta check it. 
Cursed Eye, but two Spirit Hearts. So, I mean, Cursed Eye is just crazy enough to work. I'm not going to take it, but that should give you an idea of where my psychosis is on this run. And actually, I think it's it's outdated. This, this damage that we're doing now is actually great. So I am not going to complain too hard about where our run stands, but I still have that, like, kind of... That seeming inertia, you know, of why is this run bad and what do we do about it? It's actually good now. And you know what? It gave us a time to talk. We we haven't... Isaac episodes usually fall into, like, Crazy Zane or talking about Isaac a lot. This has been a run where we got to talk about, you know, my feelings on being part of the quote-unquote industry. And I hope that you found that at least semi-interesting. My take-home message at the end is, like, you as... Not only consumers of games, but as consumers of videos, you know, you got a lot of power. Whatever you choose to watch and reward by watching uh, is, is what's going to grow. That's a lot of responsibility. Personally, I don't know. I find myself... I love video games. And I love what I do. But there are times where I'm like... Here we go again. No Man's Sky was different. <laughs> I was on the No Man's Sky, uh, a lot of the negativity for that game, because I was like, you lied. Overtly. That's really shitty, and I, I, mean, I do feel for, like, what they're going through. And having, like, you know, tens of millions of dollars is not necessarily going to make them happy. I don't, I don't think they necessarily did it maliciously, and I think now they're paying the price either way, but, you know, I was on, I was on to that. I was taking shots at that, so again, I'm not innocent either, but this one I'm kind of like, I don't know. I like when we play games that we like and we make entertainment out of it. Like, Player Unknown Battlegrounds, I think, is like only an okay game. If it was released by a AAA studio, I think people would be like, this is not acceptable. It's buggy and janky and blah, blah, blah. But it's. All I want to play right now, except Isaac and Hollow Knight, to, to be fair. But, you know, when I finish my work, which is admittedly playing video games. But when I finish my work, I'm like, I want to play that. I want to play that with friends. That game, despite its jankiness, has been a very bright spot for me this year. And I'm like, man, I could take pot shots at Mass Effect. Or I could go to bat for Mass Effect. Or I could just play this game that I, like, really am enjoying right now. I don't begrudge anybody for, anybody for taking the... Uh, taking a different approach by the way but and it's certainly there are people who are like player unknown battlegrounds it's like everything wrong with the industry oh my god when did twitch and youtubers get so much influence over you know taste making and stuff like that and that's all like you know that's another side of the industry people like people on twitch and youtube they got a chip on their shoulder about old media man i get it i've told this anecdote before but one of the first media events i ever went to was back in like January of 2013, so we're talking, it's a while ago. Did we get spun? We already had the virus, actually, so that's not going to be worth it for us. Um, you know, traditional media outlets were still on top. We should just drop the left hand, like, right now. Um, we should take it into this room, though, because that could have been a, a shitty chest if, if, if we didn't do that. Um, anyway, so we were at that event. I didn't know anybody. I was we were taking the shuttle to get to like the hotel after we left the airport, and um, people were like, "Oh, what are you guys doing to like modernize the times?" And there was a writer, and I genuinely do not know who the writer was. It's been too long, um, but he's like, "You know, we're we're starting up like our own YouTube channel," uh, and people were like, "Oh yeah, you know, that's the way things are going these days. YouTube's probably going to become pretty big," and you know. We're sitting there as YouTubers, like, eh, you know, spend, like, you know, 60 hours a week making content, so I understand I, it's nice to be appreciative. And they're like, yeah, we're going to do it, but we're going to do it, like, not shitty. And I was like, ah, that really hurts. That stings, man, because just because we're doing something different doesn't mean we're assholes. But I also think that, you know, it's easy to take that comment and then, you know, wear it on the sleeve for the rest of your life as motivation. You know, it's like being called chubby in middle school or something like that. You're like, this guy called me chubby. I hate people who are jocks or something like that. You know, you identify whatever group he's a part of. And you're like, I hate all those people. I'm going to use it as motivation. That's good. But I think, like, probably if you asked all the other writers on the bus, they would have been like, that comment was pretty shitty, dude. 
Like, we don't support that, so... I don't know, I have friends on the old media side as well. I don't I don't see it as like an us versus them sort of thing at all. You know, unless you make it about that. I don't know. I don't consider myself like... I consider myself an entertainer, I guess, who uses games. I have excised myself from the journalistic part of games media. And I wish everybody else, you know, luck in dealing with it. I'd rather just sit here and, you know, play Isaac and be relatively happy and be able to not worry too much about my opinions being taste-making or, you know, taste-breaking. I don't know. We're getting too inside baseball. Who gives a shit, right? Who gives a shit? Let's go bowling, dude. Now, I'm going to hurt Isaac. I'm going to make him feel the pain uh, of everybody that has watched this run and watched me slowly inch up from no damage to, like, actually pretty good damage. And I'm really hoping we ball out of control on the chest here. By the way, for all that I talked about here, this sounds very manufactured and, and like, lip service, but you guys are really to thank. Like, we're, I think we have a unique channel in a YouTube sense in that you guys like what I do and support what I do the amount that I do it, which is a little crazy, the amount of videos that you guys watch that I make, I'm very flattered, is what I mean by that. Not like, go get a life. Continue to watch these videos, and I will be a very happy man. Black Hole's pretty good. Parasite's good. The Soul's good. Pisces is okay. Um, in fact, if anything, you guys watching the videos enables me to have a professional life. And I respect that and appreciate that a great deal. But, you know, it is really thanks to the fact that you guys enjoy this content and watch it that, um, you know, you, you don't see this channel being like, you know, the top five, number one, worst one-liners and blah, blah. But, you know, I and I watch those channels myself now and then. And I'm okay with it. But I'm I'm very glad that we can make a little bit more free-form content that is in, enjoyable for me personally. And I don't know, well, okay, Cracked Crown is dope here, but allows me to be more positive, dude, because there's so much negativity in the industry, and a lot of it is very warranted. But I like being, I like having the opportunity most of the time to be this, you know, you, you don't have to watch this channel and be like, what am I going to get mad about today? You, you can watch YouTube.com slash Northern Lion and be like, let's just work it into the routine and have a good time. Butter is a horrible item, a horrible trinket. Every time we use our space bar item, we drop it. It's not good, at least for uh, Black Hole, I think. It might be good for Pandora's box. So we are going to win this run. I'm, I'm amazed that it's actually come to be this easy, to be honest with you. That might be Bookworm? No, it's only your second book. Um, anyway, yeah, this is getting like overly sentimental. Which is uncomfortable for me as someone not completely in touch with their emotions. So all I'm saying is thank you. Thank you for your support. I say it now and then, I might not say it enough. Gertie, you have no chance against the power of the black hole. The bullet is enormous, there is no escape. It's actually like a pretty not bad run, all things considered. It came together at the end. It was bad for like a lot of it. And it was not good for even more. But it was, uh, it became great at the end. I mean, this 3 rate of fire combined with 13.32 damage is really good. Maybe it just feels worse than it actually was because we didn't, uh, we didn't reach the highs of our previous Eden runs. But either way, good talk, good talk, chat. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.